can. Also with us is Dr. David Purse. He's the public health authority uh, for the Houston Health Department. Dr. Purse, I want to start with you because you are in the middle now of what is one of the nation's new coronavirus hotspots. That's Houston. We're talking about Harris County. And just so I can show people what's going on and what the problems are in terms of ICU bed usage. There are 1,500 ICU beds occupied out of 1,622. That's a 92.5%, 92%. Now, I know that you can surge and, and accept more beds, but that's unsustainable. What kind of pressure does this put on the hospital system there? Well, it puts tremendous pressure on the on the hospital system, and not only one the you know the multiple hospital systems that we have over a nine county region. Uh, tremendous pressure, not only on the systems but also on the personnel. They're working very long shifts. They're very tired. They're wearing lots of PPE, and it's exhausting. And we've been doing this for months now. Uh, and Dr. Uh, Purse, I also heard that you said that until people understand that perfectly healthy looking people are the ones who are spreading this virus, they won't be able to really get their heads around how dangerous it is to be with their best friend or a family member, that this is sort of an, an invisible threat. And you don't think that people have quite grasped that yet. No, I don't think that people have grasped that. When we have to have the local government come out with a uh, mandatory masking order, that's because people are not wearing masks. And, you know, once people get sick and have symptoms, I would like to think that every American at this point knows that they are potentially infected with COVID and therefore potentially spreading it. So it's the people who aren't feeling ill or perhaps the people who are just in denial of the situation who are the ones that we can't get ahead of through our contact tracing and all our traditional epidemiologic things. We can't get ahead of the person who doesn't have symptoms and get them to quarantine. So the thing that they need to do is they need to start wearing masks and social distancing all the time. This virus doesn't care. This virus will take advantage of any opportunity that you give it. So, Dr. Morazzo, to you, it, just so people get a sense of what else is happening around the country, let's talk about Florida, for instance, where we've seen an increase in hospitalization, an increase in new cases. And this chart that we're looking at right here is an increase in the percent of new tests that are positive. The positivity rate is approaching 20 percent. That's a dangerous rate. What that means is that 20 percent of people who are being tested are positive. It shows us that the increase in new cases isn't just about more testing. It's about this virus spreading within the community. And given the political realities, and I know you, both of your jobs are as doctors uh, in healing people, but there are political realities now, which are that it, it's awfully hard to tell people to go home after you've let them out. How do you slow this down? Right, John, you outline, I think, the major challenges we've been talking about for months now. And I do feel like we're really revisiting exactly what we saw happening in New York, in Seattle, in some of our West Coast cities. Basically, we have been talking about this question of asymptomatic spread or pre-symptomatic spread. As Dr. Peirce mentioned, when people are sick, they really will stay home. The challenge has been and continues to be to emphasize to people that feel really well, particularly young people who clearly get mild or disease with this infection and sometimes may not get any symptoms at all, that they could be just as responsible for spreading the virus as somebody who's sneezing it across the room. I want to come back to this concept of masks. I think it's incredibly unfortunate that this has become so political. It's a no-brainer that when you cough, when you sneeze, you cover your mouth, you cover your nose. There is nothing political about that. It's it's just a matter of courtesy and common attempt to keep people healthy. We know that masks do prevent spread of this transmission, and the best evidence we have is probably from healthcare workers who, when they have adequate PPE, have managed not to get infected, which is really critical given Dr. Peirce's comments about how our healthcare workforce is really being threatened. When you hear Houston is having trouble, Houston's one of the great medical cities in the world. Um, and the fact that those ICUs are overwhelmed, that the children's ICUs are now admitting adults, that should really alarm people and make them sit up and take notice. And just to put a finer point on the whole political nature of this, there's this councilman, Dr. Purse, in Arizona who um, seems to believe that wearing a mask is a deprivation of his own personal freedom rather than protecting someone else from getting 
gravely ill or even dying. And he staged this rally. It looks like about 100 people showed up about how they shouldn't have to wear masks. And he even compared his own discomfort in wearing a mask to George Floyd's final words. Here it is. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. He's been roundly criticized, we should say, from other politicians in his state. But do you think, Dr. Peirce, that that's why we're seeing these huge spikes, I mean, these record-breaking spikes in so many states this morning? I, I think that the lack of wearing masks um, and it having been politicized is absolutely contributing to it. And it's just a, a shame. And I don't think history is going to look back uh, forgivingly upon the United States and Americans for uh, going down this road. Uh, you know, wearing pants can be uh, uncomfortable, but we wear pants every day everywhere we go, right? There are, we wear seatbelts when we get in the car. They're not always the most comfortable. We do it all the time. America needs to adapt to wearing masks just like we adapted to wearing seatbelts. Um, wearing a seatbelt protects you, but nevertheless, not drinking and driving protects those around you. We're not supposed to drink and drive either. I am an active member of the pro-pants lobby, Dr. Peirce, just so you know, in Prove favor it. of it. Prove it. We haven't seen you from the waist down for a long I'm time. I'm in favor of it most of the time. <laughs> uh, Dr. Morazzo, the decision by New York, Connecticut, New Jersey to ask people, and in some cases order people, to quarantine for 14 days when they come into these states, how effective will that be? How effective are those types uh, of measures? So I think there's a quest two questions there. How effective is it going to be as a social message and how effective is it going to be as an enforceable message? With regard to the latter, it's clearly not enforceable, right? It's it's really an honor system as Governor Cuomo emphasized. You're asking people to do this because again, we're coming back to this issue of trying to take care of each other and not wanting to see what New York did. So I think the message is much more important as a symbolic gesture. What New York is saying and what the governor is saying is that, look, been there, done that. We do not want to go back. You know, we have this sense of seeing these disasters from afar, whether it's this situation, an ICU overloaded, an earthquake, a hurricane, and it's really never us until it is us. And I think this is a very same situation. So I really respect the governor and the people who are sending this message out because what they're saying is, look, we lost people. We worked really hard. We're devastated. We were devastated by this. We do not want to go through that again. It's a great way of putting it. It's never really us until it is us. And in many ways, what we're seeing in some of these states, we saw two months ago in other places. Dr. Morazzo, Dr. Mm -hmm. Purse, great to have you on the show. Thanks so much for being with us this morning.